And so please welcome Andrew Van der Feltz, Global Senior Director, Business Development, Expedia Group Media Solutions, to talk about restarting tourism and what we need to know. Over to you, Andrew. Thank you and good morning uh, and good afternoon from London. Unfortunately, I can't uh, join you in Singapore and I'm quite jealous of John having made that uh, trip across. So um, we'll have to make do this way and uh, do it virtually. But I have for the next 10 minutes and pleasure to try and guide um, the industry in terms of what's happening in terms of trends and reports. Now, we produce uh, trend reports on a quarterly basis and there'll be a link right at the end that can be downloaded and QR code for more information on a regular basis. So just trying to touch on a three main topics um, this afternoon for you. Um, we tend to look at uh, research and data analysis in, in two main ways. Our own first party data that we glean from our uh, consumers that come onto our platforms throughout the period, um, leaving data behind. This is an incredible amount of data, 300 petabytes of data that allows us to really delve deep into understanding how consumers are behaving on our sites. And second to that, um, in order to understand a little bit more behind the reasons why they make these decisions, we undertake on an annual basis intent um, surveys uh, to understand the behavior behind those decisions. So the combination of the two tries uh, and gives us a little bit more of an, an understanding behind the consumer choices that they're making. And throughout this pandemic, um, if I just go to the next slide, please, um, what we have seen uh, and continue to see is that the main thrusts for change, um, and it was interesting to hear Thailand just there saying it's going to be opening up because these are the types of information that really does change how consumers behave. Um, in, in the word, opportunism is um, very much in all our nature, and we look for opportunities to travel when we can travel. And I'll show a few slides on that in a second. But it is all dictated to a great extent by uh, the messaging and the noise that's in the marketplace around vaccine rollouts, but also a lifting of restrictions, uh, government restrictions in terms of travel. So it's encouraging news over the last few months, certainly, um, where governments are starting to remove many of these restrictions and opening up the lanes uh, for travel. That in turn will drive the demand search and followed by booking shortly afterwards. So if we go to the next slide, just to give a view of that over the last uh, period, it continues and has continued to fluctuate. I'm sure for this audience and many audiences I've spoken to before, it is, doesn't come as a big surprise. However, it is stabilizing and that is the strong uh, piece of information that we want to take out of that. It has been extremely, uh, as I say, fluctuating over the period. But as things become more confident, consumer confidence comes back, it tends to stabilize a little bit, but still has those fluctuations when announcements come in in terms of uh, search demand. So we've seen in Q2 a continued 10 week growth period in terms of week on week uh, interest in uh, searching for travel. I'll touch on that domestic international split in a second as well. But this is something, a key takeaway to maintain a visibility on what's happening in the marketplace. If we dive to the next slide, we can look at a little bit more uh, detail around um, one in particular episode in Australia, New Zealand and the APAC region towards the back end of last year when the um, corridor was announced. Uh, overnight, there was a 1,000% increase, roughly speaking, in terms of search volumes. Now, that is, again, my point around opportunism. So if you are in a destination marketing position, it is about that visibility. A lot of destinations quite naturally went dark, were asked to go dark during the pandemic. This has obviously had an effect in terms of that visibility of the destinations to consumers that never stopped actually dreaming and searching and being on the different uh, sites, not just OTA sites, but a multitude of different sites searching for what their next trip might be when that would be possible. So you can see that that consumer opportunism sits there and is a direct reaction. If I dive into the next slide, we can look a little bit more in terms of that vaccine uh, rollout uh, in me as an example and i hope that this uh, will be reflected as things improve and start speeding up and i'm sure they are from what i'm hearing today in the apac region uh, you can see here um, and i won't spend too much time on this one but effectively every time there was an announcement of a sort around a vaccine rollout or an acceptance of a type of vaccine you could see the immediate bounce in terms of uh, search demand for uh, travel throughout that period. And this is a week on week view. So if you have it aggregated, it is a continuous growth curve that we've been seeing over the last uh, couple of quarters. In fact, 
uh, quarter two on quarter one was a 70% increase in search demand for travel. So it is a very strong signal when we can see um, that it has a direct impact on the search demands. It is then up to ourselves and the destinations and all the suppliers to try and capture that demand into bookings and, and have travel come back to some sort of uh, normality. If I go to the next slide, what I wanted to also then touch on is a little bit around the fact that we see that that vaccine rollout is incredibly important or the access more importantly to vaccines. And uh, our CEO, who I believe is speaking a little later on, initiated a, a campaign to have us support together with UNICEF the, the access to vaccines around the world to those who are less uh, able to get those vaccines as easily. And this has raised uh, some in the region when I last checked around about $10 million um, from every time somebody books uh, a trip on one of our mobile apps, a donation is made towards UNICEF towards helping uh, access to vaccines. So as I step into the next one, one of the second key points um, that we are looking at and keeping a tab on, um, if I go to the next slide, please, um, we look at uh, the search windows. And I'll go to the next slide as well, because we can go straight to the, 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 the stats. But what we actually see um, is throughout the pandemic, and right at the beginning, there was a little bit of confusion in terms of how long is this pandemic going to be around for? Um, most of us believed and hoped that it might be gone by uh, the end of that summer and things would be back to normal. And that shows that beginning there in terms of the trends around long uh, versus short term. But throughout the pandemic, we've really seen that zero to 21 day booking window being key. Um, opportunism, obviously, there people uh, not waiting, but as soon as opportunity came, making that booking. And you can see the others at the bottom there in terms of longer booking windows were um, more stable and a lower. We are now seeing that resurgence in longer booking with 60 day plus. Uh, and if you dive down into different markets on this specifically, you can see some very specific regional differences. And more than happy to share that with our partners. And again, there's a link at the end of this presentation. If I go to the next slide, where of time in the 10 minutes I have, um, you can see here what I was mentioning earlier on, the difference between domestic and international. So throughout the pandemic, as um, some of the speakers behind before me mentioned, um, domestic was key and is continues to be very central to a lot of the um, uh, bookings that are happening. However, what is very encouraging is three times in the last few months is we've seen that international, the teal color, light blue, has been outpacing the search from uh, over domestic searches. So there is that pent up demand. It is there and we know that it's going to uh, come and we've seen those bookings obviously increase in different destinations around the world. So very strengthening to see this um, domestic um, continue, but international coming back to the fore on a regular basis now. If I move to the next slide, I want to just also touch on the fact that uh, there are regional differences, of course, and this points out the, the, the super regions around the world where APAC remains very much stable, as you can see there, with a long, uh, the shorter booking window, because effectively that international travel hasn't uh, come back and people have remained domestic. Um, and therefore, that booking window has remained a very short one. Whereas in regions around the world where that international travel is coming back, such as EMEA, you can see that the booking window has lengthened versus the uh, other parts of the world. So we see that bounce back come towards a longer, more confident booking window looking forward. And that helps us all plan more effectively our campaigns, our approaches, and our communication to the audience. And if I go to the next uh, slide, communication is incredibly important as we uh, move forward. And really, as has been touched on wellness, sustainability, um, as my colleague from the Thai Tourism Authority just pointed out, that these are key reasons why people are now thinking about travel. We've had the time over uh, during COVID really to sort of uh, look deeper uh, at why we travel and what we want to achieve through our travel. Um, and this is now very much more at the fore of the communication that is coming out. And if I go to the next slide, in particular, uh, the younger generations um, and even uh, up to 60 percent of the, uh, those polled um, informed us that they would be willing to spend more money to make their trips that little bit more sustainable. Who in particular, if I go to the next slide, are thinking about this? Um, no surprises. It is, of course, the younger generation. You can see here the Generation Z and millennials leading the charge here that really that sustainability uh, piece of um, the travel and the meaning behind travel, communicating with cultures, exchanging with different communities is at the forefront of what they think about now with travel with 67, 64% making up part of that decision, but not being left behind 
um, Generation X and the and the boomers also having more thinking around this process. How do we support this? If I go to the next slide, um, and, and from our own point of view, is it's very important that we, um, as an organization, also try and drive and support that. And we talked about where uh, the Thai tourism authority, who spoke just before me, um, pointed out. Um, we are working very closely with um, uh, UNESCO in this uh, case and the Thai Tourism Authority. We launched in 2019 a tourism pledge for sustainability. Uh, I've had over 4,000 uh, companies um, sign that pledge, um, and that's now being rolled out globally. So we see, of course, this messaging key to uh, travel in the future, a major trend. And with just a few seconds to go, I'll leave you with a few key takeaways, which are from my very brief presentation uh, the next slide, it continues to fluctuate. Keep an eye on that fluctuation because in those fluctuations is opportunity. The opportunity is driven by that demand and that surge demand from consumers that are reacting to um, government initiative to move it and as well as destination promotions to get them back on track. Secondly, the booking window is also changing. The confidence is coming back in travel. You can plan out further than those 60 days to try and capture the market uh, into 2022. And finally, sustainability and a lot of other um, elements around wellness, et cetera, for travel are becoming even more important to consumers moving forward. So with that, I'll leave you with the last slide and the link and the QR code to our uh, recovery trend reports that you can download um, and take from that. I hope that's given some insight um, and I thank you for your attention.